Hi there, welcome back to the English class unit 6 and yes, the risk of biodiversity that we've been discussing in the last two videos. We heard about the tale of woes of two villages, the village of Koko and our very own Indian village in Kolkata. Today, there's yet another heart-rending story of a village wiped out by a man-made calamity. It's not something that nature did to us, but we did it to ourselves. Let's see. Vorobyov, Ukraine. That is a nuclear reactor that is situated in Ukraine. One of the worst human disasters, one of the worst calamities caused by man. One of the worst affected villages by radiation fallout from the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. One of the reactors of this nuclear plant exploded. And people, even today, people don't visit that village. There is a 30 kilometer radius around that village where there is no life. Not even a bird passes that place. People visit to see that huge mistake man has made and how thousands of people are still facing the effects. Even today, children are born deformed because their great-grandparents were exposed to this radiation fallout from this Chernobyl nuclear disaster. So this again is an interview of a lady from that village. It happened on April the 26th, 1986. I remember the date because it was my mother's birthday. We heard the explosion early in the morning. We didn't worry because there had been explosions before from Chernobyl. Now pay attention here. Looks like problems did occur before the final problem and looks like nobody paid attention. They were so used to listening to blasts, which shouldn't have happened. But this one was bigger. There was a big, big boom that morning. Everyone stopped what they were doing and listened. Then we ran out into the garden. We could see a cloud of white smoke coming from the nuclear reactor. Nuclear dust. Natasha Revenko wiped her hands nervously on her apron. Just recollecting those moments is making her so jittery. Tears came to the corners of her eyes and slid slowly down her pinched pale cheeks. It was a Saturday. She went on, still wiping her hands on her apron. An apron is a cloth worn by women when they are cooking. It was a lovely warm day and the children played outside all weekend in a cold country when the sun is out, everyone is happy and the children were playing outside. Even when the dust began to fall, they still played outside. The children are so innocent, they thought it was snow. They didn't know that it was death being sprinkled on them. They picked up handfuls of it and threw it on each other, laughing. It was a Wednesday. So what happened? This went on for a few days. Nobody knew what was happening. They were not informed that it is an emergency and they immediately have to move away from the radioactive dust. But it was a Wednesday before the loudspeaker van came to the village. Look at the delay. Telling us to keep our children indoors and not to touch the radioactive dust. But the damage had already been done. They also told us to wash down our houses and roads with water. A week later, the children began to vomit. Their hair fell off. They couldn't eat. They grew so thin and sores appeared all over their little bodies. Two weeks after that, all three died 
and she is talking about only her children. Imagine the thousands of families whose children disappeared from the face of earth. All three on the same day. She broke down now and cried quietly as she had done so many times before. They are buried over there and she points out to the place they are buried. She pointed to the church graveyard. Lots of village children are and adults too. The whole town, the whole village, all of them exposed because they were in such near proximity to that nuclear explosion, that nuclear radioactive cloud and the dust, radioactive dust must have penetrated their bones. I touched her, the interviewer is saying. I touched her gently on the shoulder, leaving her to her bittersweet memories and walked on through the silence. That town, that village of Vorobyov is called the ghost town. There is not a single sign of life since then till now. It was a ghost town. No one lived there anymore. They had either died or been forcibly evacuated. Their homeland snatched away from beneath their feet just because of your negligence. No one lived there anymore. They had either died or been forcibly evacuated, forcibly asked to leave. The fields were barren, no plants, no birds, nothing grew. The soil is so contaminated, even if you try to grow something on it today, nothing will come out of it. Nothing ever would again. There was no bird song, no rabbit peered at me, no cow endlessly chewed, no horse neighed. Natasha caught me up as we boarded the bus marked Moscow. Thank you for coming with me, she says. I wanted to see the graves and the house again before I die. So what are we addressing here today? The dangers of a nuclear plant. Yes, nuclear energy is a good source of energy. It's a good alternative. But the dangers associated with it when things go wrong is immensely steep, irreparable damage. We have alternatives like solar energy, tidal energy, wind energy. They are safer sources of energy. Let's see more. Nuclear energy is also called atomic energy. It is generated using nuclear elements like uranium, plutonium, thorium. Now these are deadly elements. If not handled properly, they can wipe out humans. They can wipe out life from Earth. A controlled nuclear reaction takes place in a nuclear reactor. It is done by either splitting or combining these elements. Splitting is called fission and combining is called fusion. So when this happens, large amounts of energy results. This energy can be stored to create power, electricity for the entire country. Yes, it's a very valuable source of energy. This energy, along with the humongous amounts of steam released, is used to supply power to houses, industries, and also, sadly, nuclear weapons. If this reaction goes wrong, if it goes out of control, it leads to disasters like nuclear blasts or total meltdown. This causes a release of large amounts of nuclear dust which is harmful to humans, plants, and also the environment. The Chernobyl accident in 1986, why did it happen? It was a result of a flawed reactor design. The engineering, the engineering group that put up that nuclear reactor, why did they do this to that village? Look at that huge, Ferris wheel, so lifeless. It was a result of a flawed reactor design that was operated with inadequately trained personnel. How do people not realize the responsibility that la that's in your hands when you're dealing with something so dangerous? How carefully it should be handled? The resulting steam explosion 
and fires released at least 5%, only 5% of the radioactive content. And look what that 5% did. Why are we waiting for the day when 100% of it booms into the environment and wipes us out? To prevent this kind of nuclear disaster from happening again, both the nuclear industry and government officials worldwide must seriously consider making at least five major changes to the safety systems at nuclear power plants, as well as to security measures and international agreements. Let's see a little more about this. Steps to be taken. First, stabilize the electricity supply system. Any erratic fluctuations in power will, will lead to sparks and an unimaginable accidents. So a steady and proper supply of electricity is very important when you're putting up a nuclear plant. You have to store spent fuel in dry casks. Spent fuel is the radioactive waste that comes out after the nuclear reaction is done. Now that is extremely hazardous and it should be stored in special dry casks containers. Install filtered vent systems. These filtered vent systems, they should be able to let out only the steam and the pressure. By chance, if any of the nuclear emission comes out, we are gone. So this is also an important step. Prevent sabotage at nuclear facilities. Make complete sure that in no way any kind of damage can happen to the nuclear plant. Ratify a treaty to prohibit military attacks. So uh, make treaties with other countries. Tell them how dangerous it would be if they would ever attack a nuclear reactor, not only for the country, but other countries, neighboring countries too. So what we have to understand here, the price of inaction. If we do not act now, and if the world's leaders are not going to make a change, there could be unimaginably steep effects. That means there's no way back. So that was our reading C, the tale of three villages. I'll see you soon with another unit, another chapter. Bye.